Westerners have not always been objective when it comes to hula. The word hula often brings to mind a stereotypical image of an exotic island female. This type of visual image is a Western construct derived from early 19th century photographers and 20th century Hollywood movies. In old Hawaii, hula played an integral role in the culture to facilitate the blessings of the gods, to increase the fertility of the earth, and to entertain the divine royalty or li'i. It embodied the powerful life force of mana, a dormant energy potential activated through performance arts. Hula supersedes dance. It consists of different genres of movement systems. That is, vocal accompaniment or bodily gestures are always connected to the language. For example, to pick a flower, as illustrated here, might be a metaphor for a child grown or the larger community, depending on context. In ancient times, as well as today, master teachers are referred to as kumuhula, kumu meaning source. Kumuhula educated and trained dancers, composed new melehula or chants, created choreography to record knowledge and movements, and often performed as the ho'opa'a or musical accompaniment. Formal training took place in an academy called the Halau. In the Halau, students learned about culture, arts, beauty, history, science, music, and movement. The intended meaning is found in the root of the word halau, ha meaning breath and life, and lao meaning to spread out like a vine. The olapa or dancers dedicated their lives to laka, the hula deity. Dancers had to learn how to construct the kuahu olaka, or hula altar, and went through a rigorous training lasting years. Plants were used to symbolize deities, such as the red lehua for the volcano goddess Pele, while the native fern represented laka. Choreography and ornament were the domain of the kumuhula, who could select from one of the five layers of meanings embedded in chants. Color schemes and ornaments were selected to enhance the storytelling. Red and yellow were considered high-ranking colors reserved for divine rulers and deities. One legendary Hawaiian adventure features Pele, her sister Hi'iaka, and her magic pa'uhula, or lower body cover. The pa'uhula is a constant element of traditional hula performances throughout time. They are worn by women as an overskirt, while men wore the pa'uhula over a loincloth. Traditionally, the pa'uhula was made from the inner bark of the paper mulberry tree, fermented and pounded out with up to 20 different wooden beaters. The final beaters were carved to impress a design called a watermark, while dyes and bamboo stamps were used for coloring the cloth. Deep yellow was often created with olena or turmeric dye. Overskirts could also be made from tea leaves picked in the forests. Large leaves of the same size were collected in bundles, stems were folded over perpendicular to cordage, and then tied in one at a time. The leaves were also combined with salt water as part of purification ceremonies prior to a performance. Traditionally, sacred hula was performed in cut stone temple complexes or heiau in front of altars and to the accompaniment of large wooden drums or hula pahu. The rhythmic beats dictated foot movements, gestures illustrated the chants, and one mistake meant a death sentence. I alohe kikai o kalalau. Aloha e ke kai o kalalau, ke ko pi alai na pali, u kahe kahe valei nu alo. Court performances function to honor royalty and enhance the fertility of the royal line. Many of the chants derive from a genre known as hula ala papa, dating back 200 years to the Kamehameha dynasty. Characterized by the instrumental accompaniment of the indigenous double gordipu, Words are chanted rather than sung, and the movements are vigorous and energetic. I aloha mokawea mokawea kuu moku. Aloha mokawea mokawea kuu moku. E kahi hoa i ke aloha mama la wala i kanoho na. With the national adoption of Christianity in 1820, hula was outlawed and went underground. It formally re-emerged during the coronation of Hawaii's last king, David Kalakaua. A new hula genre was born, hula kui, 
a style that combined old and new elements together. Kalakaua is credited with the beginning of the Hawaiian cultural renaissance. In his courts, stringed instruments such as the guitar and ukulele were introduced and incorporated into the music of hula. Consequently, Kalakaua's nickname is the Merry Monarch, and it is to him that the annual Merry Monarch Hula Festival is dedicated. In Hilo, Hawaii, this past April 2013, the annual Merry Monarch Hula Festival celebrated its 50th year as the premier display and most prestigious competition in the world of hula. The festival includes art exhibits, workshops, live performances, and a parade where even horses get dressed up. At the center of the festivities, however, are the live performances held in the Edith Kanaka Ole Stadium, where female soloists and male and female groups compete for the highest form of recognition. Performances are categorized as hula kihiko, or old style, and hula awana, or new style. Awana is the modern hula, recognized by the wavy hands in women's dancing, Female groups often show off their grace and formations in contrast to the frontal orientation of kihiko performances. Male groups often perform energetic or comic hula, and note also the western style clothing. Kalakawa stated, hula is the language of the heart, therefore the heartbeat of the Hawaiian people. As hula continues to spread out in the 21st century, there are presently halau operating all over the world, including here in Bozeman. These groups have given life to the hula in a global setting and its new reputation as the most popular dance form in the world. Thank you. <laughs>